Well, uh, like I said before, good morning and afternoon to everyone here on the line. I want to thank you for attending this webinar today. I know your time is very valuable here. Uh, you know, we'll be going today between 45 minutes and an hour, depending upon questions and everything. Um, so um, we will be um, through the GoToWebinar program here. Uh, you'll see that if you have a question at the end, um, you can just click on question there and I can go through and unmute people one by one that uh, puts their hand up when you see it in the corner there on the webinar deal. So, and of course, if you don't get your questions answered today, uh, you can give us a call at 877-844-0900 and we would be glad to uh, help you out. for here, talking about moving money to the next generation or to a spouse or to a charity, an institution, university, whatever it might be, um, on the most tax efficient way possible and with, of course, the most uh, total value of money being passed on to, trying to leverage this money in whatever way that we can. So, uh, you know, we here at the Olson Group have... Uh, been working in the life insurance market a lot in the single premium life market for a number of years now and have been bringing you guys different products and different strategies to do this and hopefully what we can do today is give you some good sales ideas some great products that have just come out here recently and some good incentives to do business with the Olson group here and uh, help you go out and help your clients today and uh, and make some money as well So what are we talking about here when we're talking about capital transfer? Well, there are a few different reasons why we're doing this. First of all, the main idea is to leave a larger net estate after taxes. You know, income taxes are the big thing we're going to focus on here. We're going to show how you're going to owe less total income tax uh, when this is being passed on uh, to have a smaller tax bracket for your heirs as well. This all kind of, you know, is wrapped around what we call the tax time bomb, which either results from annuities, you know, tax deferred annuities, or IRA accounts, where, you know, you've done a great job of deferring these taxes for a long period of time, but Uncle Sam is going to get his money in the end. And uh, you can either pay it now and shift it into something that's income tax free, or your heirs or your spouse are, is going to have a large taxable bill in the future, which not only will cut down on the total amount of inheritance they get after taxes, but it can al also boost them up into a much larger tax bracket on all of their other income that they've had uh, through the years. So, you know, where somebody, maybe you have a relative who, let's say, you know, earns fifty to $60,000 per year in ordinary income, well, if you're going to give them an extra $100,000 of ordinary income there for the given year, you're going to bump up that tax bracket that they're in, and they're going to effectively pay more taxes on their own wages than they would have had they not gotten that, uh, you know, that large tax hit uh, from your inheritance. So we're going to show you how to maybe minimize uh, those taxes and this tax time bomb. Uh, another thing we can show how to use this is to help recover market losses. Of course, there are a lot of people out there right now with some big market losses. You know, it's uh, it's kind of like a roller coaster out there. We haven't had very good news here recently in the last couple weeks, but um, we're starting to recover from that low point that we had a couple years ago when um, you know the market first hit this uh, you know this big crash. But a lot of people are still underwater here and are trying to find a way ways to make some of that money back. We can do that a lot of times with life insurance. We want to also show how a lot of these policies now uh, provide emergency long-term care dollars, where if they do get sick, they can access these death benefits uh, for all forms of long-term care, not just nursing home, but also home health care. Um, so we'll show how we can do that as well. Of course, there are a couple of uh, key things that we can show on the life insurance side of things. Uh, that other products don't have. We have an immediate increase in estate value. So this leveraging factor from that moment that underwriting has gone through, uh, we can have the immediate increase in estate value. We have tax deferred growth on the cash values inside, just like we do with deferred annuity products. Um, 
We also have uh, the income tax-free death benefit, which is a very rare, not a whole lot of other products and uh, concepts have this type of deal. And uh, we can show, uh, we're going to show different products here, single premium and multi, multiple premium type of situations here, whether your, your client has a, one chunk of money or they're going to break it up into a number of years to shift the money into life insurance. The first thing we're going to talk about here today is single premium life insurance. And uh, single premium life has a no lapse guarantee, the, all these products that we talk about, which means you make one payment and that death benefit is going to be guaranteed forever. Usually it's to age 100, 110. Most of these products we have is to age 120. So they'll never owe another premium payment ever. We're going to show how a lot of these have living benefits, where if the client's diagnosed with a terminal illness, or a chronic illness or going into a nursing home, then they can access benefits from this policy to help out with those costs. We have simplified underwriting products, which have become very popular here, where the client only has to um, have a phone interview or um, and the application. Sometimes an attending physician statement needs to be done. We need to get doctor's records. But in most cases, there's never a, an exam required uh, by the client. And then we have the full underwriting, the traditional underwriting products here where if your client is healthy, they're probably going to get a bigger bang for the buck there if you're just interested in total death benefit. And they'll have a normal paramed exam and uh, blood and urine draw and that type of thing. Uh, single premium life insurance. It is a MEC, a modified endowment contract. Uh, no more premiums are going to be owed on this. Um, and, you know, just for people that are maybe getting started in this market, sometimes MEC uh, is a bad name to a lot of people, but all it means is just if you take any withdrawals from the cash value on this modified endowment contract, it is taxed like an annuity is, where the first money out is considered gain and will be taxed at ordinary income levels um, instead of life insurance uh, that passes the seven pay test and is considered a non-MEC where you can take loans income tax-free from the product. But the main thing we're concerned about is the death benefit here. And for MEX and non-MEX alike, it's income tax-free to the heirs in both of those situations. So let's get right into some of these products before we get into some of the case designs. Uh, we'll start with the simplified underwriting products. Uh, we're going to focus on two carriers today. Sagicor Life Insurance Company is one. They're an A-minus rated carrier based domestically here out of uh, uh, offices in Tampa and Scottsdale. We have their fixed indexed single premium whole life and their interest sensitive single premium whole life, which is more of the fixed version of the product. Then we also have uh, Equitrust. They have their wealth sure and then their brand new Wealth Max bonus products, which are their fixed and fixed index products, respectively. And then on the simplified underwriting side, there's this Sagicor 7-pay indexed whole life product, which is nice because sometimes, for various reasons, clients don't want to pay a one-time premium. They want to break it up over a number of years. And with this 7-pay version, we can make it a non-MEC and also uh, utilize this SPIA that they have where we can do a combo sale where we can roll dollars in to an immediate annuity, have that pay out over seven years directly in to this life insurance product. This is especially good if you're working with qualified money where you want to break out that tax burden over seven years that the client's going to owe, or a deferred annuity where you can benefit from the exclusion ratio by moving it into this SPIA so only one-seventh of that taxable income on that large lump sum of money will be due uh, each year for seven years. And of course, we'll go through uh, some different case designs to illustrate that. But these are all simplified underwriting, no exams, just a um, telephone interview and the application. And on occasion, if they need to, uh, they'll do an attending physician statement. All right, let's first work with uh, what, what has been our biggest seller here uh, for a lot of reasons that you'll see is this Sagicor fixed indexed 
single premium whole life product. Now the first thing that uh, a lot of people like here that really makes the sale easy is that it has a guaranteed return of premium at any time. We like to call this the money back guarantee where if a client puts in let's say $100,000 into the product at any time regardless of what surrender charges are and what their true surrender value would be after surrender charges they can at least always get back that $100,000 at any time no questions asked. So it really cuts down on any buyer's remorse that the client has of thinking Ugh, you know this sounds good this sounds like uh, the type of product I want it gives me these great benefits but what happens if I do need the money? Well, you can always get that back without having to have any type of excuse to do that. So you can just have it. It has a 10% bonus. So if you can see this is really trying to appeal to annuity agents and annuity clients as an annuity alternative, uh, you'll see that because they have a 10% bonus to the cash value right away. That really helps to uh, you know, pay for maybe any surrender charges that the client had when they moved an annuity over to this product or maybe any to recoup for any taxes that the client held out by moving it from a taxable vehicle into this uh, tax-free death benefit product. Then of course it also works kind of like a long-term care hybrid contract because it has the chronic illness rider. And the way that this works is if the client cannot perform two of six activities of daily living then the um, SAGICOR will accelerate all but $25,000 of the death benefit to that client over 33 months. And that comes out income tax-free to the client as well because it's paid like an accelerated death benefit. So that's a great way to provide you know, a type of long-term care coverage for a client that doesn't want to purchase traditional long-term care because maybe they perceive it as a use it or lose it type of situation. With this, if the client needs the money for long-term care, they can uh, turn on this rider. If not, then it's just going to go income tax-free to the heirs like they intended. <clears throat> this product is standard issue through table four. So not to be elementary, but uh, you know, with life insurance, you have your smoker and non-smoker ratings, but then you also have your preferred, standard, and then it goes down to table one, table two, table three, table four. So the way that Sagicor does this is as, as long as you're within those four tables of underwriting from their uh, from their simplified underwriting process, you're either going to going to get a smoker or a non-smoker rate. So when it's either an approve or decline type of situation, with a telephone interview and the application only, like I said before, in extreme situations though they want to do an attending physician statement if it's maybe a large case on an older individual, and they will let you know if they need to do that. This product has an 8% commission on the single premium amount. That's from the minimum age of 18 to 80. And then ages 81 to 85, it still pays a very strong 6% commission. So 85 is the max issue, issue age on this product. A little further. Uh, like I said, this is a fixed indexed single premium whole life product one of the only whole life products I've seen that also has index crediting with it, so it has great guarantees along with upside potential of an index strategy. So you've got three different interest options here. You've got your traditional annual point-to-point -point from the S&P 500 with 100% participation and a current 8% annual cap. So those lock in every year as an annual reset. Then they have this global basket strategy that's currently at a 45% participation rate with no spread or no cap. With this strategy, uh, interest is credited every three years. They look at every three-year cycle, and they use the Russell 2000, the Dow Jones Eurostock 50, and the Hang Seng Index. And basically, they take the first place performer and give a 60% weighting to that. Uh, index. Then the second place they give a 40% weighting and then they throw out the worst one. And uh, whatever that total gain was between those, they give it a 45% participation rate. So you'll see on uh, on the illustrations when, when you start running these that it uh, has a very strong uh, 
uh, historical performance over the last 30 years with those. So you can give the client a little bit of international exposure with this product as well. And currently, if you want to go in the fixed bucket, it's a 4% rate on the cash value. Overall, this product has a 2% guarantee even if all these markets go down every single year. All right. Well, let's look at its sister product here, the interest-sensitive single premium whole life. Um, now, this has all of the same general features that I just explained from the index product, except for a couple things. Um, first of all, does not have the 10% bonus to the cash value like the index one does. And I think because of that, it has a slightly higher commission, with a 10% commission on the single premium through age 80. And this one will write uh, to older ages, all the way through age 90 with a 6.5% commission at those ages. And it's just traditional fixed rates on here. No index credits, 5% current yield in the first year. They're projected to renew at a 3.5% base. And for the length of the contract, there's a 3% bare minimum guarantee on this. And uh, with both of these products, they have no lapse guarantee. So regardless of what interest rates do, your death benefit is always going to be guaranteed as long as you don't pull a lot of money out of the contract. Now, the third Sagicor product, since we're already talking about some of these general features with the chronic illness riders um, and the index credits, they have a 7 pay indexed whole life product. It has the same uh, riders and guarantees with that product and the same crediting strategies that the fixed index single premium one did. It's just uh, you can pay it over uh, equal amounts over seven years. It's a totally paid up product after seven years. And actually, after you make that first payment into that, you have a guaranteed death benefit uh, that's going to be paid to the client, whether you pass away after one year or after, you know, 30 years. And you can also use this, like I said, as a combo sale with a seven-year certain SPIA to spread out a tax, any tax burden when you're moving over from a different source. And we're going to go over examples on that as well. With this product, it's paid more like traditional life insurance with a 90% uh, commission on target premium in year one, and also 4% on any excess premiums and on renewal premiums. So very uh, competitive commission rates with compared to other life insurance products in the market. All right, well now we're going to talk about some brand new products that just came on board here, uh, one of them just as soon as last week or so, and then this other one uh, only uh, you know a month or two since we brought it on board. I know many of you have written business with Equitrust over the last few years on the annuity side, um, and they have some very inventive products and competitive products on the annuity side, and so now they brought those talents over to the life insurance side. Um, and just to let you know, I guess just a plug for our group here too, um, if you are appointed on the annuity side with Equitrust, there are only a couple IMOs that have uh, the life insurance contract with them and the ability to sell these products. So. The majority of people, you're not able to sell this Equitrust product unless you're appointed with groups like the Olson Group that have the relationship for this life insurance side. So first, we're going to look at this uh, WealthSure Life product. <clears throat> it's an interest-sensitive single premium whole life product that will issue through age 85. It's standard through Table 4, just like the Sagicor product was. They do the telephone interview. Uh, and the application for the main underwriting. And with this one, it has a whopping 15% commission all the way through age 80. And even ages 81 to 85, it's 11.5%. So this one uh, definitely will pay you for, uh, for a good day's work. Get out a little bit differently. First of all, if you're diagnosed with a terminal illness, you can accelerate up to 100 for 100% of the face amount. If you go into a nursing home, you can have 100% of that death benefit paid over three years, which would come out income tax-free to the client, or have a lump sum of 85%, which potentially could be taxable, and we'll get into some of those different reasons later. So you have two options on that. For the chronic care benefit, which is like the chronic illness rider with Sagicor, again, if the client can't perform two activities of daily living, then you can accelerate 
100% of that death benefit over five years to help pay for any types of long-term care costs. Or you can do a lump sum version with this as well at 75% of the death benefit. So this too can serve like a long-term care hybrid contract product and they're getting it rolling here, they have a tremendous bonus that I know a lot of you uh, through us have been taking advantage of. In addition to this 15% commission rate, they're giving you a $2,000 first case bonus as long as that uh, piece of business is over 50 grand. If it's under that, it's $500 first year bonus. And bonuses in subsequent cases, if it's 50,000 bucks or more, another two grand. 750 if it's under that uh, $50,000. So this is extended through, I can't believe it's already September, but through the end of this month, through September 30th. So take advantage of this right now for any clients you have out there. Uh, in addition to that 15%, you can get an extra two grand uh, on top of that to help you pay for other marketing costs and other things coming up here for uh, the fall. Now what we're going to talk about is a brand new product that's going to be their sister product, which is the Wealth Max product, where they give a 12% first year bonus on this indexed uh, single premium whole life product. So 12% right up front uh, to help pay for any uh, you know, taxes or surrender charges the client had. They have a return of premium money back guarantee on this product as well. So. Like we said before, the client puts in hundred grand. At any time, they can walk away with that $100,000, no questions asked if they need it, regardless of what the surrender charges are. This one will issue through age 85 as well. Uh, they have four index crediting strategies to choose from. Uh, they have the same underwriting guidelines and, and writers as the Wealth Assured did there. So they've got the nursing home, the terminal illness, and the chronic uh, illness that can help out with home health care and other uh, long-term care costs. This one has a 9% commission through age 75. It breaks down to 85 from 76 to 80, and still a strong 6.5 commission, 81 through 85. So um, pretty strong here, money-back guarantee, 12% bonus with a 9% comp. So please uh, let us know if you have clients that you want to see uh, illustrations for these two new Equitrust products. Before we get into some of these case writing ULs. Well, what, what we're looking at here, we, we can design these life insurance products however we want to do them. You can do a single pay, a limited pay, like a five or ten pay, or just have an ongoing premium for as long as the client lives. Like I said before, if the client's healthy, you're going to get a bigger bang for your buck here uh, with a larger death benefit. Maybe not some of the same return of premium guarantees that the uh, simplified underwriter products have. These, all these UL products we work with have no lapse guarantees, so uh, you know a lot of your clients may have had uh, some UL products that imploded in the past that they asked for more cash into this UL or else the policy would collapse. Well, that's not going to happen with these new generation of ULs because they all have these no lapse guarantees that, hey, as long as you pay this specific premium, your policy will never lapse no matter what happens to your cash value or interest rates. We can make it a non-MEC if you want to, so you can take out tax-free loans later on. And we've got many uh, carriers to choose from, a lot of top-tier, highly rated carriers. All right, well, let's get down to the meat of these products. Hey, it's great to know all the features, but how can we use these in different case studies? So I'm going to share with you a lot of the different um, case situations that we use here with our agents, and, and we're going to give you some real-life examples. We're going to talk about moving annuities and CDs into life insurance, the most obvious one for a client that uh, you know has identified a chunk of money that they're probably not going to need to use for income, and they just want to pass on to a spouse or the next generation. We're going to talk about variable annuity rescue situations. Uh, or also going to talk about loss recovery, people that have lost money in the marketplace and need to get that back at least for their heirs. We're going to talk about a fixed or a fixed index annuity rescue as well that maybe the client is trying to get out of a certain maybe two-tiered annuity or something that's not performing well um, because of caps and rates. We're also going to be talking about what we call the 5% solution, which talks about accessing either an IRA or a non-qualified 
uh, pot of money, uh, that maybe you don't want to move the whole thing, but just take a 5% withdrawal per year to increase the estate overall, and maybe to help pay for some of the taxes that are going to be due on that taxable vehicle when the client passes away. And last but not least, we'll talk about using these as a long-term care insurance alternative where it's not perceived by the client as a use it or lose it situation that they can access those uh, you know, dollars from the policy if they do get sick. All right, the first one we want to talk about, uh, annuity life insurance here. Well, let's just jump right into it with a, with a real life situation here. We had a male age 70. They had a $150,000 annuity that was currently earning a 4% rate. Not bad in today's environment. They had a $100,000 cost basis in this annuity, meaning there were $50,000 of built up gain inside this. There was still a 5% surrender charge as well. And they wanted to uh, leave money to the kids. So all of these, we have different fact finders you can use that are in the members only section of our website. But this is always after going through and doing the income planning, figuring out what they need for you know, other parts of living. And then we fi find out which chunks of money are earmarked to be passed down to the next generation. And this $150,000 annuity was what this 70-year-old guy wanted to move. What was our solution? Well, we were going to surrender the annuity, pay the income taxes owed now, and buy this uh, Sagicor fixed indexed single premium render value. I would take the surrender charges and hold out 25% in taxes from that gain in the product. We were left with a little under $132,000. Now with that premium, we got a guaranteed death benefit with Sagicor of $212,000. Now, when we used our different index strategies in there, at life expectancy of this client, uh, that death benefit was projected to grow all the way to about $364,000. So we were at least guaranteed the 212, and if history repeated itself, we had some good growth, we could tack on over $100,000 of extra um, tax-free death benefit. Well, one of the things that we have at our disposal here is this program called CapTran, where we can uh, compare if a client stays in a current annuity versus moving into a single premium life product, or if they're in a CD, or if they have an IRA, you know, under current conditions, hey, if you waited till life expectancy, would you have more money in the life insurance or in the annuity after taxes? So what we're showing here, if they stayed in the current annuity, that had 150,000 bucks, the projected value of life expectancy, which I believe is about 16 years for an age 70 year old, um, is uh, $249,000. Well, that's great, but at their passing, uh, the income tax due would be over $37,000 on this, leaving a net after-tax inheritance of around $212,000. If that rings a bell there, our, um, our guaranteed death benefit day one after you put that premium in there is $212,000 with the Sagicor. So you'd have to wait you know, around 16 years for growth in that annuity just to get to that minimum guaranteed death benefit with Sagicor that we're getting after the client signs the paper. So our idea was to turn in that 150 grand of annuity pay the surrender charges, pay the 10 grand of current income tax at a 25% tax bracket, and pop the money into this uh, Sagicor single premium whole life product that bought a policy for the $212,000 guaranteed death benefit, but that was also projected to grow at life expectancy to $364,000. Of course, there's no income tax due because it's life insurance, so the net after tax inheritance, your client would get $151,000 more, or 72% more, if you do our deal and transfer into life insurance. So our client was very happy with that idea and did the deal and uh, moved that into the Sagicor product. All right. Well, moving on to a different annuity to life example. In this case, we had a 63-year-old male that um, has $120,000 in an annuity. Now, this is an annuity they've had 
they had for um, a number of years uh, 1035 exchange into different annuity products and uh, kept that uh, tax deferred status going. So their cost basis was $40,000 in this policy, meaning they had $80,000 of taxable gain built up in this annuity. But uh, we identified through our fact finding that they wanted to move it to an income tax-free death benefit situation. But the guy didn't really, wasn't too hot on uh, paying $80,000 or recognizing $80,000 of extraordinary income that year, uh, all, all in one year, but still wanted to find a way to move it. Well, what he showed him that we, we could do is we could 1035 exchange that deferred annuity into a SAGICOR immediate seven-year certain annuity. And we assigned those seven SPIA payments as premiums to the SAGICOR indexed seven pay whole life product. So what we do by using this exclusion ratio that spreads out taxes equally over those seven years, we spread the taxes owed over seven years and the policy is totally paid up after that seven-year period. Let's see how those numbers worked out. Well, um, we had uh, this SPIA was paying out a little less than $19,000 to this life insurance product uh, for seven years. Uh, Thirteen grand of that is taxable each year. So he could uh, live with the idea of recognizing an extra $13,000 of ordinary income instead of a full 80 grand in one year. This bought a death benefit of $200,000 that was vested day one. So we've already, from that first SPIA payment going in there, we've turned $120,000 um, $120, taxable annuity into a $200,000 tax-free death benefit. But if the client even died during that seven-year payout, the beneficiaries not only would receive the life insurance tax-free death benefit, but they would also get the remaining annuity uh, payments from that seven-year certain SPIA. And to combine this all together, not only do they have that death benefit, but it has the chronic illness rider on it that if a client can't perform two activities of daily living, they would have over $5,000 a month available uh, for all forms of long-term care up to 33 months. And that's just deducted dollar for dollar from the death benefit as it's being paid out. So needless to say, this client was very happy with this program too, and we solved uh, their tax problem as well as their wealth transfer uh, problem. <clears throat> all right, well, let's look at a situation that's usually the, you know, the easiest out of all these too, uh, moving a CD to life. We identified that this uh, woman, age 74, this grandmother, uh, had a $50,000 CD that was earmarked to leave to the grandchildren. It's going to happen. You know, try to use that to help out for college, uh, you know, help out for uh, room and board and everything uh, when those kids go to college. So, uh, you know, and they had, she had a CD uh, at a 2.5% rate, which is actually a pretty good CD rate these days. I think uh, we're still around 2% for the average five-year CD. Um, so, uh, obviously, we, with this situation, we had an, an easy uh, decision. What we did was... Uh, we decided we were going to surrender the CD. There had been no taxes owed because they owe taxes every year on the gain and in interest from that CD because it's not a tax-deferred vehicle and it was not an IRA. So we surrendered the CD, no taxes owed, and we bought the Equitrust WealthSure product that we just spoke about. This is the one that has the 15% commission and the extra two grand bonus right now. And this one, because it was $50,000, qualified for that extra bought a $74,000 guaranteed death benefit in this Equitrust product. And uh, just so we're being apples to apples on our end, the client said, well, that, that's great, but, you know, what if I did keep it in this CD here and, uh, you know, held it to my life expectancy? This is what the 74-year-old said. Well, let's look. At a 2.5% two, two rate, that 50 grand would grow to $64,000 at your life expectancy. There would be no tax due because it's a CD and you're paying taxes every year. So you would have uh, you know, just under sixty five grand to pass on to your kids for life insurance, as opposed to what we just quoted you, $74,000 tax-free 
that you get day one without waiting, you know, another 10 years or so for that growth to happen. So even after that period of time, your heirs are still going to inherit $9,000 more or 14% more if you transfer uh, this to life insurance. You're going to be paid for a lot more college tuition uh, in my situation. So client did the deal. All right, moving on here, we're going to look at another case study talking about loss recovery here. Now, I'm sure this is, you know, if you're dealing with anybody that has money in the market or had money in the market, uh, you know, they're really, especially the retirees, they're really concerned about this up and down marketplace, uh, losing money that they either need to use for income to live on or just money that, you know, they're looking to pass on, uh, especially for their spouse. And a lot of times, you know, money that they had earmarked to go to the kids that now has been cut in half or reduced by 25% or so. So look at the situation that we had here with a 70-year-old male that had $100,000 in their brokerage account um, that they were going to leave to uh, his heirs. And this specific one, uh, he wanted to leave this uh, to his spouse, I believe. So he was concerned about, uh, she was a couple years younger and uh, concerned about what she was going to live on after he passed away. But market losses decreased the value of this uh, account by 25%. So now he was down to 75 grand in this brokerage account. And he wanted to recover these losses, and uh, if it was, could be in a tax-efficient manner, uh, that, of course, would make him happy as well. So what did we do? Well, we used this remaining 75 grand after the market loss to purchase the Sagicor fixed index single premium whole life. This 75 grand of premium got that nice 10% bonus that was uh, credit of the cash account too, but bought a $120,000 guaranteed death benefit that was going to be income tax free. So not only did we recover that 25 grand in losses, but we added another $20,000 of tax free money on top of that, which would have taken a long, long time uh, in the market with a, some great gain to get back to that 120 grand. And now we're doing it on an income tax-free basis as well without any worry about any capital gains taxes. So that's a great way for earmarked money to be passed down to recover it through life insurance instead of having the client sweat it out and hoping the market comes back. Let's look at a similar situation here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the guy in the picture here that, that uh, we <laughs> that we used, but uh, uh, let's just pretend like he is. We have a 74-year-old male that lost money in a variable annuity, and they're holding the, you know they're holding this product now for this death benefit. You know, a lot of these variable annuities have good death benefit guarantees that say you know even if the uh, you know your sub accounts inside this variable annuity, these mutual funds, if they lose money you're still going to have a certain amount for death benefit to pass on to your spouse or your heirs. So we identified that this pot, this VA wasn't something that they were using for income. They were concerned about holding this for the death benefit. So the original premium in the variable annuity was $150,000. The cash value now is down to 111 grand. But they had, I think it was a high watermark uh, death benefit situation of $160,000. So thinking if I move this money now, you know, I'm going to miss out on this, you know, 49 grand of extra money in there that was being credited to my death benefit. Well, we said, hey, Mr. Client, if it's really the death benefit you're concerned with, we can do a lot better in one of my products. What we showed him is surrendering this variable annuity and buying the Aviva Advantage Builder uh, No Lapse Guarantee Universal Life product. And with this, $111,000 of premium, which was what was remaining in that variable annuity, uh, bought 232 grand of guaranteed death benefit all the way through age 120. So once again, we leapfrogged over that $160,000 of variable annuity death benefit, and uh, you know added on over 70 grand of income tax-free dollars to this client's account that was going to be guaranteed to age 120. Now with this one, the client was healthy. Uh, they didn't mind going through the underwriting process. Didn't really care about some of the other simplified underwriting features that Sagicor and Equitrust have with, you know, return of premium guarantees 
and uh, with different chronic illness riders. With this, they're thinking, hey, this is just, let's max out the death benefit. And so that's what we did, and uh, that's what sealed the deal for the 74-year-old. All right, well, let's look at, uh, you know, not to keep picking on the market and variable annuity type of products, let's look at, uh, you know, some different situations with a fixed annuity rescue. Let's say we have a client that uh, has a bad annuity that they want out of or that they perceive as bad because, hey, you know, they're locked in the high surrender charges and uh, maybe it's a two-tiered annuity that has an annuitization value, which is different from their true cash value and walkaway value. And they have poor rates and caps in here, and they feel trapped. And they're thinking, I'm not making any money on this. I really can't get out without a big stinging penalty. What can I do? Well, a lot of these products have uh, features where you can annuitize for the full account value without surrender charges, and maybe even get that special annuitization value in there uh, without having to revert to the, uh, you know, the, the, the true cash value on those two tiered products. Well, what we can do is we can annuitize these products and make premium payments to a guaranteed no-lapse universal life product or maybe like that Sagicore 7 pay indexed whole life product. So we can turn a, deferred, a tax deferred annuity into a tax-free death benefit if that's what they want to do with this. And so a lot of these products, some of them let you annuitize over five years and get out after a certain amount of time. Some of them we can do it for a seven-year period, or maybe some, some of them make you do a 10-year period. Regardless, we can find the product to fit that annuitization policy. This situation, we had a 71-year-old male that had $137,000 of account value in an annuity with a 9% surrender charge. But we identified that they were able to annuitize this product for 10 years for that full value of $137,000 without taking that 9% surrender charge off of it. And we found out this guy, of course, wanted to leave this chunk of money to his heirs. So if we, when we annuitized for 10 years, we were able to get out $13,910 uh, over 10 years. So what we did was we applied those premiums, those 10 yearly premiums on just a 10-pay scenario to that Aviva Advantage Builder UL again. And we got a guaranteed uh, almost $248,000 tax-free death benefit guaranteed all the way to age 120 by uh, doing this 10 pay. It's totally paid up after 10 years. No more premiums owed, and that death benefit was guaranteed. So from taking this guy from a situation where he was earning low interest rates in this annuity, still had a 9% surrender charge, Day one, when that first premium went in to the Aviva product, we turned $137,000 into 247 dollars tax-free uh, and helped him accomplish that goal. Okay, and we're going to be going just a little bit longer here, and then we're going to open up the questions here, but uh, I want to talk about this case study of the 5% solution. You may have seen some of the videos uh, in our media center at olsongroup.com talking about the 5% solution. We do this with all different types of accounts, whether we're doing it with a simplified underwriting final expense type of product or a regular universal life contract uh, where we make annual payments. But basically what we're talking about is uh, having a client here that wants to increase their total estate value and also minimize taxes. And a lot of times it's a situation where they have an IRA, which of course is going to be fully taxable, or a non-qualified annuity that has a large gain there, where we don't want to, you know, the client doesn't want to annuitize it, and they don't want to surrender it and pay this full lump sum, um, or pay, pay the full tax burden in one year. And we're also identified, uh, identifying with these clients that maybe they don't need the annual interest off of this account for current income. <clears throat> so the, the biggest situation I always see is someone, somebody that has an IRA account uh, that's taking this required minimum distribution every year, but they don't want to. You know, they're 70 and a half, they have to take it, you know, they have to pay tax on it, they don't know what to do with it, and they end up spending it, but would rather kind of keep it in the account there if they could, or make, <clears throat> you know, some good use of that money. 
Well, we have a great solution for those type of people. We take out 5% of that account annually to pay for the life insurance premium. We keep that IRA or non-qualified annuity active. It's still growing in whatever you know, annuity investment that it might be in over there. And you have this life insurance policy to pay for taxes that's going to be owed on that IRA or annuity account. So let's look at an example here to show you really how powerful this is. Let's look at a 68-year-old female that we had. She was a preferred non-smoker, healthy. She had a $280,000 IRA. She was going to have to start taking RMDs pretty soon, but uh, wanted to really kind of uh, find a way to pay for some of the taxes that were going to be owed on this IRA and increase the total estate value. So we looked at 5% off of this, which was $14,000 per year. We just wanted to do this for a limited period of time, for seven years. So we pulled out that 14 grand, and with the Sagicor 7-pay whole life, and this client you know, just had the simplified underwriting situation here, just a telephone interview to get this issued, for seven years of that 14 grand premium, we could buy $145,000 of guaranteed death benefit. Added on to that $280,000 IRA. Now this is where it's kind of powerful here too. If you're in a product, and this was a lot easier a couple of years ago when you had uh, higher interest rates, but you have a product that's maybe averaging a 5% rate of return, and you're doing the 5% solution, you're basically taking interest only off of this, and you're not digging into that $280,000 of IRA principal. So we're pretty much keeping that 280 intact while adding on 145 grand of extra income tax-free benefits to increase that total estate value to 425,000. Now let's say you were in a fixed annuity at three and a half uh, on this, and you wanted to do a three and a half percent solution. Well, fine, lower the premium. You can do the same type of deal if you wanted to keep that principal intact or however you want to do it. But still, I mean, the powerful thing is that. Uh, that extra life insurance you can take just from taking basically the interest only or a required minimum distribution off of a client's account. And with this, not that you guys care, but uh, the agent made uh, almost uh, 5400 bucks uh, of commission in the first year just by helping them out with that, uh, taking that interest off of the client's account. Recap. But uh, let's look at this long-term care insurance alternative. Now, I've done webinars in the past, and we have one that's archived on our website talking about long-term care hybrids, where we get into a lot of these products in more detail. But let's just look at it from this capital transfer perspective here today. Um, and these all are going to be archived, including this uh, one on our website at olsongroup.com. So this is one case where we had a 72-year-old widow that wanted long-term care protection, but didn't want to pur uh, purchase traditional long-term care insurance. This agent came to me. He presented a couple different long-term care insurance quotes. Uh, even though she was in decent health, just basically had some high blood pressure, she wasn't on board with paying this uh, couple grand a year in long-term care insurance premiums uh, here to buy that. But still was worried because she is a widow, doesn't have anybody else to help her out with this. Um, uh, you know, to, to pay for those costs, you know, to find a way to do that instead of just out of her own pocket. And she had uh, 150 grand set aside, she and her husband did, for uh, the children and grandchildren, you know, in cash and investments. So we saw that that was there and, and you know, said, hey, that, that's great that you have that 150 grand set aside, but what's going to happen if you do uh, need help with long-term care costs, which can be very expensive? You're going to have to dig through that 150 grand they have set aside for them. Isn't that true? She agreed. So what we did was we moved that 150,000 into the Sagicor fixed index single premium whole life contract that has the chronic illness rider. So right away we first moved this, turned this 150 grand into 255,000 dollars of guaranteed tax-free death benefit for the children and grandchildren instead of just that 150 grand in cash and investments. But also, if she gets sick, now she can take uh, almost $7,000 per month tax-free off of this death benefit to help pay for these long-term care costs for up to 33 months here. 
And so she liked it because it wasn't a use it or lose it scenario. Hey, if I don't get sick, now I've got 255 grand of tax-free dollars to pass to my kids and grandkids versus the 150. And I've got a larger pot of money to draw off of for long-term care if I do get sick. So once again, we solved the needs from both of those angles, and she did the deal. All right, well, let's just recap what we talked about here. What are we doing with capital transfer? We're increasing the total estate value. We're, uh, we, we're getting an income tax-free death benefit, which you can't get from many things. We're avoiding the annuity tax time bomb. That's great when you build up with all those tax-deferred uh, growth, but uh, you know, some, you're going to have to pay sooner or later. We can help use these products to recover market losses for the heirs. We can rescue uh, poor-performing variable annuities and fixed annuities and also provide a long-term care insurance alternative protection that's not a use it or lose it type of situation. All right, well, I would like to thank everybody for joining us here. Um, now, if you have questions, I think, uh, you know, on the GoToWebinar um, deal there, you will want to... Um, plug in, uh, put, put, put the question sign up, and I can click on you and it will unmute. I hope I stated that correctly.